This isn't your typical battery story. Forget sleek black boxes filled with lithium and wires. The future of energy storage might lie in bricks and volcanic rocks, ancient materials reborn for a modern crisis. As the world races to capture every stray ray of sun and gust of wind, storing that power becomes the missing link. Enter a surprising duo. One company stacks bricks like a giant toaster, the other packs crushed lava into steel cells. Both claim to cut emissions, costs, and dependence on fossil fuels. But can something so primitive truly power tomorrow? Let's uncover the heat-driven revolution hiding in plain sight. Why heat? Why now? Imagine catching sunlight in a bottle, not just for today, but for the moment a storm hits or the wind decides to sleep. That's the real challenge behind renewable energy. Power comes in waves, generous one day, absent the next. Without a dependable way to store it, even the greenest grids falter. While lithium batteries have led the charge so far, they come with a high price tag and a short lifespan. Now, a quieter revolution is rising, one that doesn't sparkle with sleek tech, but radiates with raw practicality. Heat, not the kind from wires and gadgets, but ancient elemental warmth trapped in stone and earth. The idea? Use everyday materials to hold energy as heat, store it cheaply, safely, and for the long haul. This isn't just another workaround. It's a throwback with a twist. Instead of rare metals, we turn to bricks. Instead of toxic waste, we get reusable rocks. It's a low-tech meeting with high stakes. And in that meeting, the future of power might just find its most unlikely hero. The brick that stores the sun. Somewhere in California, a warehouse-sized box hums with silent power. It doesn't flash, beep, or whir. Inside, thousands of bricks bake quietly in the dark, holding heat like ancient coals waiting to be stirred. This is the Rondo Heat Battery, or as its creators call it, the Brick Toaster. It works on a radical yet simple premise. Capture excess electricity and turn it into heat. That heat is then absorbed by dense ceramic bricks stacked in insulated walls capable of reaching temperatures up to 1,500 degrees C's. No chemicals, no combustion, just clean energy, bottled as warmth. When needed, air is blown through the glowing bricks, emerging as superheated gas or steam, ready to drive industrial machinery, dry cement, or even sterilize equipment. What makes Rondo's system remarkable isn't just its efficiency, but its durability. Some bricks are projected to last a century. No moving parts, no emissions, just heat, captured and released like breath. This isn't about storing energy for gadgets or cars. It's about fueling entire industries, slashing costs, and cutting emissions all at once. Bricks, once the building blocks of civilization, might now rebuild the way civilization is powered. Rock solid, Bren Miller's answer. Across the globe in Israel, another solution is heating up, literally. Instead of bricks, Bren Miller Energy turned to nature's volcanic bones, crushed rocks. Their thermal battery, the B-Gen, looks industrial, but inside it's deceptively simple. Electricity or excess heat flows in. The rocks absorb and hold that heat. And when it's needed, it comes out as hot air, water, or steam, ready for action. What sets B-Gen apart isn't just what it stores, but how it fits. Its lower heat range, maxing around 500 degrees C, makes it ideal for tasks like drying, molding, and pasteurizing. These processes don't need fiery extremes, but they do need reliability. One of Bren Miller's standout deployments is at a Brazilian factory making water tanks. There, a B-Gen battery charges using biomass like wood chips and replaces natural gas in plastic molding machines. The result? A 75% drop in heating costs and nearly 800 fewer tons of emissions each year. It's modular, flexible, and refreshingly low-tech. No rare earths, no explosions, just heat tucked away in crushed stone. Where Rondo aims for the high end of industry, Bren Miller anchors the middle, quietly replacing fossil fuels, one factory at a time. When heat meets industry, 
Industrial operations depend on heat. From metal casting to food production, high temperatures are essential. But most factories still burn fossil fuels to get that heat, leading to massive emissions. In 2021, nearly a quarter of global carbon emissions came directly from industrial heat generation. That's more than what all vehicles on the planet emit. Processes like steel making, plastic production, and cement baking are major contributors. Thermal energy storage offers a clean alternative. Instead of constantly burning gas or coal, factories can store heat during off-peak hours using renewable electricity, then tap into it when production ramps up. Systems like Rondo and Brenmillers are designed for exactly this. They act as industrial thermal batteries, releasing energy on command with no combustion involved. With long lifespans and minimal maintenance, these systems offer a rare blend of reliability and sustainability. If widely adopted, they could revolutionize manufacturing by cutting both emissions and energy costs. In an industry slow to change, heat storage might become the disruption it never saw coming. Cementing a cleaner future. Cement is the backbone of cities and a major carbon culprit. Its production process emits massive amounts of CO2, with 70% coming from chemical reactions and 30 from burning fuels to heat kilns. That last part is where innovation steps in. In 2023, Rondo partnered with Titan and Siam Cement Groups to change how kilns stay hot. Their plan? Capture and store waste heat from cement production, then reuse it in the same process. Instead of venting heat into the sky, it's trapped and recycled using Rondo's thermal battery. The result is a closed-loop system that slashes emissions and cuts costs. In early tests, plants using Rondo's tech reported up to 90% fewer emissions and 30% savings in energy bills. While the cement industry isn't going away, its environmental impact can be transformed. And if even a fraction of the world's cement plants follow this model, the global carbon footprint could shrink dramatically. Heat storage may not change what we build, but it could change how we build it. District heating, ancient idea, modern revival. Thousands of years ago, Romans used hot springs to heat their homes. Today, that same concept is making a comeback. District heating uses central plants to distribute heat via steam or hot water through underground pipes to neighborhoods, campuses, or entire cities. It's efficient and can be carbon neutral if powered by clean sources. That's where thermal batteries come in. Both Rondo and Brenmiller see district heating as a perfect match. In Finland, a sand-based thermal battery already helps heat homes. In the U.S., Brenmiller's system is replacing old infrastructure at Purchase College in New York. By reusing turbine exhaust, it provides heating and electricity with far lower emissions. District heating isn't new, but paired with modern TES systems, it becomes a quiet revolution. No need for gas boilers in every basement. No spikes in demand when winter bites. Just steady, stored warmth traveling beneath our feet. In a world chasing electric solutions, heat, delivered like water, might be the oldest, smartest idea we need to bring back. The Limits of Heat Thermal energy storage has clear benefits, but it isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Some industries need more heat than current systems can provide. Steelmaking, for example, demands temperatures above 1,600 degrees C. Rondo's brick batteries max out at 1,500 degrees C. Brenmiller's B-Gen units, meanwhile, operate between 100 degrees and 500 degrees C, ideal for medium heat tasks like food processing or plastics, but not high heat giants like steel or cement. That said, the companies know their limits. Rondo hints at upgrades that could reach 1,800 degrees, but that's still in development. Brenmiller deliberately focuses on sectors that match its range, offering flexibility and affordability. These limitations don't make TES obsolete. They just mean it's one tool among many. Roughly 60% of industrial heat demand falls within ranges that TES already covers. That's huge. So while the hottest processes may still need innovation, a massive slice of industry is already within reach. As technology matures, thermal batteries may stretch even further. 
But even without perfection, they're already rewriting what heat can do. Scaling up the heat revolution. The pilot phase is ending. Thermal storage is scaling. In Italy, Bren Miller's partnership with Enel tests their system at a real power plant. In Brazil, their batteries power factory machines while slashing gas bills. Now, they're building a 31.5 Melodower system for a Romanian tobacco plant. Rondo's rollout is just as ambitious. With claims of up to 90% emission cuts and 30 lower costs, their heat battery is drawing global attention. Meanwhile, entire nations are stepping in. China and the UAE are building 600 Melodower's molten salt storage facilities, signaling serious momentum for TES. But questions remain. Will these systems perform under pressure? Can they adapt across climates, economies, and energy grids? If they do, a quiet transformation could ripple worldwide, where cities, industries, and infrastructures move from flickering fossil flames to stable, stored heat. It's not flashy, it's not loud, but the heat revolution is here, and it's growing fast. From bricks to crushed volcanic rock, the oldest materials on Earth are being reimagined to solve one of their newest challenges. How to store clean energy, cheaply and safely. Rondo and Bren Miller are proving that sometimes the best solutions aren't found in complexity, but in simplicity done right. These aren't just batteries, they're bridges to a future where heat becomes a renewable resource, not a wasted byproduct. As industries and cities quietly begin to embrace this change, the glow from thermal energy storage could light a new path forward, one built not just on innovation, but on the timeless power of heat.